there is another way by which the killing can occur and this is a very small topic see oxygen dependent killing oxygen independent killing obviously these are the ways by which the leukocytes take care of infections when the infection load isn't too high but sometimes it has been seen that the infection load can be a bit too much for the leukocytes to employ only these reactive oxygen species methods something extra is needed in those cases that extra something that extra oomph you might say that is added by a very special and very recently discovered defensive technique used by our body leukocytes that is said to be neutrophil extra cellular trap abbreviated as net what exactly is this obviously go with the name neutrophil so it has something to do with the neutrophils extra cellular trap trap so the neutrophils are doing something which is extracellular and has something to do with trapping microbes that is the meaning of this entire thing now let's get on with the actual knowledge part neutrophil extracellular trap this is actually defined as an extracellular obviously fibrillary network fibrillary network which contains antimicrobial chemicals or products like for example um, elastase okay so uh, an extracellular fibrillary network which is employed by neutrophils to kind of trap the microbes so what happens see we know from our very first discussion i think was it the very first discussion or the second discussion i don't remember we had talked about something called those receptors toll like receptors right toll like receptors were an example of receptors which were used by the sentinel cells for recognizing an external microbe or an extra a source of inflammation you might say and to hence initiate the inflammation process in this case also toll like receptors are used how again the infective pathogens they will actually first interact with these toll like receptors on what on platelets so this time it is the platelets which are acting as the identifying cells the platelets they recognize the infective pathogens and so what they will do obviously the next logical step will be to call the guys who can actually take care of that source which is activate the wbcs but in this case it is neutrophils so let's write wbcs for now later we'll change it so now again we have talked about what will happen that entire inflammation thing will go on right the entire inflammation thing will go on the process will go on and the killing will happen reactive oxygen species will be produced and reactive oxygen species their concentration will increase as i have mentioned that this neutrophil extracellular trap this is a defensive te technique which is employed by wbcs only when the bacterial load is very high so the neutrophils they are producing extra reactive oxygen species the concentration of reactive oxygen species is also very high this will lead to activation these reactive oxygen species they activate a special enzyme that special enzyme is arginine deaminase 
not deaminase arginine deaminase okay arginine deaminase arginine deaminase will lead to what the conversion of arginine to very important citrulline citrulline very 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 important citrulline what this will do is citrulline starts with c so citrulline will lead to c that is let's write it with this chromatin condensate or rather d condensation not condensation d condensation so now try to understand what i just said here toll like receptors this is the basic inflammatory pathway by the way all of the steps that we had talked about in our previous discussions that is happening here first the identification by toll like receptors except that the toll like receptors they are not present on macrophages or monocytes or all those other sentinel cells that we had talked about rather they are present on platelets in this case they identify the infective pathogen they activate the wbcs and this would lead to all those things happening finally leading to reactive oxygen species dependent killing oxygen dependent killing reactive oxygen species production their concentration would go up because the bacterial load is very high and this will activate an enzyme called arginine deaminase which will lead to the conversion of arginine to citrulline citrulline c so it will lead to c for chromatin decondensation so what would this actually mean chromatin decondensation means that the chromatin is now loose as a fibrillary network right and this chromatin this decondensed chromatin this is actually kind of pushed out of the cell and it forms a meshwork which will trap the microbes okay so now instead of one cell being able to perhaps punish two or three microbes because of the formation of this extracellular trap it will be able to deal with suppose 10 11 12 microbes right so suppose let's draw it out suppose this is the neutrophil right and uh, we know that it is 3 to 4 lobes right and within this there the chromatin was there obviously the nucleus and what this will actually do is due to now the formation due to the formation of citrulline what will happen is it will form this mesh work because the chromatin has now been pushed out of the cell and suppose initially it could trap like 1 2 3 3 now because of this increased anti microbial surface area it can trap all these so this is the net neutrophil extracellular trap okay but like everything perhaps that we have talked about in this chapter this also is a double edged sword this also has a flip side so again the beneficial effect is more defensive properties and the harmful side to this is that you now have an increased chance of autoimmune disorders why what does that mean because due to the exposure of this chromatin chromatin is now exposed under normal circumstances do you think that this should have happened no it should not have because the chromatin is packed within the nucleus within the cell so it should never come out but now it has so the nuclear receptors they are something 
which the body defense system has not encountered before because they initially don't come out or they normally rather don't come out these nuclear receptors but now our whole the host defense mechanism is saying oh my god what are these nuclear receptors i have never seen them attack them hence what is seen is antibodies against them are formed antibodies against them are formed and thus there is a very high chance increased chance of auto immune disorder especially an auto immune disorder known as systemic lupus erythematosus sle okay so this is kind of the price that you have to pay or the body pays for uh, dealing with increased bacterial load problems for example in sepsis right in microbiology we'll talk about sepsis so very high throughout the body there is infection so our body cannot keep up it is now desperate to rid off of these uh, microbes because it's entirely infected it's not just a local infection it has spread throughout the blood blood stream infection so now it has to do something right sepsis is throughout body inflammation is going on that is sepsis so now it has to do something right so this is a drastic step which is taken and obviously we have to pay the price for this there is an increased chance of autoimmune disorder for me so that kind of concludes uh, i think the scope of discussion for today mm, i hope i didn't miss out anything and the next time that we come we'll be talking about all the other disorders that are kind of associated with everything that we have studied until now in inflammation which is mostly disorders in the leukocyte functions right so hopefully the next discussion will not be as long as this one so anyways i hope this was somewhat uh, enlightening and i hope to see you all very soon thank you